How's it going everyone, it's Javi from Weather Storm Dry 1000 and in this video we're going to focus on newly formed Tropical Storm K in the Eastern Pacific and determine if this could be one of those rare scenarios where a tropical storm could impact California by this coming week and but before I begin make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather related content. So let's begin, let's take a look at the Water Vapor MG4 for Tropical Storm K which just formed a little bit earlier today and we do see that we do see a disorganized area of thunder showers right now but we do see just enough rotation and just enough of a small well-defined center circulation to a point where we could consider this a tropical storm at this time and of course the wind speed is strong enough to be considered a tropical storm and its millibar pressure is currently at around a thousand four millibars so it's still fairly weak but it is expected to strengthen as this continues to move on further northwestward and continues to absorb that very warm eastern pacific water which is currently hovering around the upper to mid 80s at this time so this will have a lot a latent this low pressure will have a lot of latent heat to absorb from the eastern pacific as the water temperatures are very warm at this time and we do see a little bit of wind shear just to the north of it there is an upper level high just to the northwest of this storm but the wind shear is expected to subside and this will allow the center circulation to organize more and for the center circulation to enhance its convection to a point where we're going to see the pressure lower and as a result the wind speed increase to a point where this likely will become a hurricane in the very near future which it would definitely be a concern for Baja California and potentially the state of California in the future if this were to impact you guys as a tropical storm now take a look at what the computer models are currently stating so keep this in mind that it's extremely rare for a tropical cyclone to impact the state of California so um, let alone even Southern California so this is so if this tropical storm were to take its check on further northward without completely fizzling out then this will be a very rare scenario for the state of California as it's as there hasn't been a direct landfall um in california when it comes to a tropical cyclone since 1939 and last time california experienced gale force winds associated with a tropical cyclone was in 1997 with tropical storm the remnants of hurricane nora which went just to the east of the southern california cities of san diego and los angeles so if this were to happen this will be an extremely rare um this will be an extremely rare um occurrence for California but it's certainly there is certainly that possibility because if you were to take a look at what the GFS model is stating we do see that the GFS model wants to rapidly intensify this to a point where this the millibar pressure drops to 946 millibars now at this point this will easily be a category 3 or category 4 hurricane at least hovering around major hurricane status which of course would be a major concern also for the, co the west coast of Metsco having a hurricane this strong just off the coast and would bring that just uh immense amount of devastation along the coast if this were to directly impact you guys and however the good news is that the GFS model does want to keep it offshore for a while um for the most part pretty much as there isn't really anywhere where the GFS model is taking a direct landfall towards um, the west coast of Metsco but we still do see that the GFS model um, does want to take a very strong storm pretty much hugging the west the western Metskin coast which is definitely a concern because if this were to uh, take a track further eastward this could directly impact you guys and bring an immense amount of damage for the west coast of Mexico, but there's still a decent amount of uncertainty because of course i'm going beyond the three day mark so a lot could change regarding the track and especially the strength forecast but we do see that even if i were to move forward to the 120 hour mark this uh, pressure is still low at 974 millibars and typically the only real way that a tropical cyclone could impact um, Southern California is if it strengthens so much in 
um, where the water temperatures are over 80 degrees to the point where as it moves northward, the cool water temperatures won't be enough to really completely weaken it by the time it reaches Southern California. And in this scenario, we do see that the GFS model wants to strengthen it so much that even though the sea surf temperatures are going to be, of course, below 80 degrees as it continues to move northward, it's going to have so it's going to be so strong to the point where even if it does weaken, it's still going to have some strength of potentially um, bring a tropical storm fairly close to the coast of Southern California, which is definitely something that doesn't that's very that doesn't happen a lot. Um, of course, because the sea surf temperature is right around Southern California and even the northern portion of Baja, California, of Mexico are below 80 degrees, pretty much at maximum um, hovering around the low to mid 70s. So um, but we still do see the GFS model wanting to weaken this eventually um, around tropical storm status. But we do see that. Um, at 980 millibars, this isn't too far from San Diego. I'd say probably around um, 100 to 200 miles away from San Diego, which is definitely something you don't see every day. And it's definitely something to at least pay attention to. And while it isn't directly impacting Southern California, there's still uncertainty regarding the track forecast because I'm going over the five day mark. So there's still that possibility we could see um, this track move further eastward to a point where it could bring more rainfall and potentially rough surf to Southern California um, associated with tropical storm or Hurricane K. So we're going to need to wait and see. And we do still have some spaghetti models wanting to take a track further eastward to where more rain and um, and um, tropical storm like conditions move towards Southern California. So we're going to need to pay close attention to this. But as of right now, the GFS model is thinking that this will primarily stay offshore, but we still could see some heavier bouts of rain associated with the outer bands of tropical storm or Hurricane K at this time. And we see a 983 millibar storm, which still could be considered hurricane status. And it's not very far from um, the border of Mexico and California. So it, it certainly could bring rough surf as well. So it's only something to keep in mind along the southern coast of California. But we do see this move westward and hopefully it stays that way. And hopefully, if anything, it moves even further westward so it doesn't impact Mexico either. But we just need to wait and see how the steering currents will build. Currently, um, the primary steering currents um, for Tropical Storm K or what will likely become Hurricane K will be this um, big ridge that's going to be just to the east of it that's going to steer it further northward. And of course, we do have that big ridge over the western portion of the United States, which has been creating very severe drought conditions, unfortunately. So hopefully, so um, the good news that would come out of a tropical storm moving close to California is that it'll help the drought a little bit. Um, the only concern is that we don't, we just don't want to see too much rain because that could cause some flooding concerns around um, California and Arizona. But if I were to continue to move forward, we do see that um, that this ridge will primarily steer this northward, and depending on how far east or west this ridge is, then it's really gonna determine how um, if this does directly impact Baja California, Mexico or not, um, depending on where exactly that ridge positions itself. Because if it's a little bit further east, and unfortunately, a uh, further eastward track would be more likely that would bring more impacts to um, Baja California and the western coast of Mexico, as well as Southern California as well, since you're more likely to experience the outer rain bands of um, tropical storm or Hurricane K. Um, but if the, if this ridge were to build a little bit further westward, then we're less likely to see impacts anywhere on land, which would certainly be a better case scenario. And of course, we need to see how this ridge will build just to the north of tropical storm or Hurricane K, because if this ridge is a little bit weaker, then we could see a track further northward and we won't see this um, this storm take a westward track away from Southern California. Um, to the point where Southern California could experience more impacts if this ridge ends up being 
a little bit weaker or moving a little bit further northward to the point where it won't move west until later, um, which would make the storm approach Southern California, um, which would make the approach to Southern California a little bit closer for this storm. So we're going to need to pay close attention to the, the, those steering patterns, patterns to really determine the track and the impacts you'll experience around um, the West um, Mexican coast as well as um as well as southern california because that certainly will play a major role in terms of what impacts you're bound to experience now taking a look at the european model the european model is taking a little bit of a different approach so the european model does not expect this storm to get anywhere near as strong while the european model does want to strengthen this uh, hurricane status it doesn't really strengthen this beyond let's say a category one or category two which would definitely be a better case scenario as the european model does expect a little bit more dry air and wind shear to inhibit it uh, as a result of an upper level high that's a little bit closer to where the storm is located than what the gfs model is forecasting so um hopefully the european model's case is correct but it's gonna be one of those wait and see um type scenarios where we're gonna need uh um just um just see um which scenario will be the more correct one depending on how much dry air and how much wind shear there will be ahead of this storm so we're going to need to wait a couple hours before we can really determine which computer model will be the more correct one but the but both computer models do take this for, um, far enough northward to where it could bring some moisture to the southwestern portion of the united states so it's at least something to keep in mind especially since there is that scenario that this storm could move westward and potentially impacts um, southern california so we're just going to need to uh, um, wait and see. Now, taking a look at the sea surf temperatures, um, you see that um, there comes a point where the sea surf temperatures fall below the 80 degree threshold. And what's concerned, however, what's concerning is that since there has been such a major heat wave for the West Coast of the United States, the sea surf temperatures are a lot warmer than what they typically are during this time of the year. So instead of the sea surf temperatures just off the southern california coast hovering closer to the upper 60s we're seeing sea surf temperatures hover closer to the mid 70s and while that's still below the 80 degree threshold that could be just enough energy produced by the sea surf temperatures just enough latent heat um, produced by the sea surf temperatures to the point where that could make the difference between how fast this storm weakens as it heads for northward as it may not weaken as fast since the sea surf temperatures are warmer than average for this time of the year as this heads for northward which is definitely a concern and another concern is that if this were to take a track further eastward it could absorb more of that very warm water that's right around the um that's right around the baja california um, bay area where we do see the sea surf temperatures hover close to 90 degrees which would give this storm much needed energy as this heads for northward so that's only a concern right there but we do see that it's inevitably going to weaken as it heads further northward but the question is how much it will weaken we're just going to need to wait and see i'm taking a look at what the ensemble members are stating and we do see a lot of them do want to take this westward before this um approaches um southern california but we still do see a decent amount of ensemble members still wanting to take a track further eastward which would impact um the south southwestern portion of the united states a little bit more so it's gonna be, and we do see the ensemble members shift from day to day so we still could easily see the computer model shift their forecast for eastward so we're just gonna need to wait and see how the steering patterns will build um over the next couple of days now um uh, taking a look at the forecast of rainfall over the next 120 hours and as of right now we don't see a lot of rain for um arizona and california but i do expect of course the rainfall to increase over the next several days once we approach a time frame where the storm would be only around five days or four days away um so we could see a heavy rain threat associated with this storm as it heads further northward um and we could see a high surf threat along the southern california's coast so make sure to keep that in mind and stay away from the coast if there's a high rip current risk as um it could definitely save your life if you take that um easy precaution now um take a look at my forecast when it comes to tropical storm k so i do expect this to strengthen into a hurricane probably somewhere between monday and tuesday and 
But yeah, and I do expect this uh, borderline become a major hurricane right around Wednesday at 110 miles per hour and could maybe even be stronger than that. And we could see that possibility where it could impact the west, um, the western portion of Mexico. So definitely keep that in mind. And I do expect this to weaken as it heads for northward. But there is, but what's scary is that California is currently in the cone of uncertainty, which is something you definitely don't see very often. So it's something at least something you'd be aware of around Southern California and even Arizona because it could bring heavy rain and potentially rough surf along the coast. So make sure to at least be aware of this over the next several days as I'll keep you guys updated regarding any major updates for this storm. But anyways, guys, I thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather content. I hope you guys have a great day.